What's up guys, Alberto Big Boost here. Today we're gonna install a TurboSmart Race Sport blow valve on the E36. As I mentioned in the previous video, I want to install a blow valve on the hot side. Let me just take the intake off real quick. Put it right here. I already went ahead and marked where I want the blow valve to be. It's gonna be on the hot side right coming out of the turbo. So it's gonna be super loud. I wanted to install it on the cold side, but I have no room over here. And then right here, I'm going to install my intake air temperature sensor. So it's already taking that spot. Otherwise, it will kind of get in the way of the tire. Just can't ignore how great this is going to fit right here. Like, tick. So as we have our mark done, we can take this off and then remove the intercooler piping. Somehow. Then we're going to take the intercooler piping off single-handedly somehow while holding the camera and we just pull on this side and it's the only microwave to help me instead of being playing among us the whole day guys i want to tell you guys later but i think marco's an imposter i'm in danger we need to take the clamp off before welding obviously we don't want to weld it with the blow valve installed because you obviously melt the o-ring that seals the flange to the blow valve. So we'll take this off, clamp it, then yeah we want to remove this black o-ring so it doesn't melt in the process. Just put the blow valve aside, we just want this. I set up the machine to 170 amp just so I have full control of the power. I set up the frequency to 90 hertz, that way you get like a not too thin and not too wide of an arc to get about medium size and then i have my ac balance to 60 percent Now we got this hole to make after the pipe is welded. It's gonna use a stead drill bit. Normally I use a hole saw, but I don't have it here. What is this? Well, broken drill bit. Neck. Bigger drill bit. Throw in the garbage. All right, guys, the pipe is finished. Now we can reassemble the blow valve. So I'm gonna put the clamp over the pipe like this. Then I can put the O-ring right on the groove. Then I can place the blow valve right over that. And we open the clamp and we put it through. That gives us the hardest part. Now we can put the little parts here well everything in the engine is getting dressed up I think it's time to dress up the valve covers even more I'm gonna head on over home for now tomorrow I'll be back with some new hardware for the 2J. It's day two, we're back. Now let's get ready to make this 2JC look a lot nicer. I did try to put new hardware everywhere on this 2J, but it's still not cutting it, still not to the level of where I want it to look like. And that's where the guys from MPC Motors come in with their 100 proof hardware. They make this really cool kit for the JC. I chose black color since I didn't want to oversaturate everything with purple so I got black anodized with stainless steel hardware these are all allen bolts this one is the valve cover hardware we got coil pack and coil pack cover hardware we have engine lift bracket hardware so you can decorate the hooks you got the intake air controller 
hardware, which is two bolts. I'm not gonna be using this either since I don't have that with the aftermarket manifold. So I have two free bolts to dress up something else. I have the CamCat hardware. This one I cannot use with my kit since mine is a 2JC BBTI. This kit is designed for the 2JC non-BBTI, but rest assured they are working on a BBTI kit as we speak. We have the water neck hardware for the thermostat. I am also not going to be using this as this one is for a GTE, both for GTE non-BBTI and BBTIs are the same, so this one will work for you. I can use these two knots for the thermostat housing though. Then we have the factory throttle body and cable bracket hardware. We have the four bolts for the throttle body and we have the two bolts for the bracket. And of course, a really nice 100 proof sticker. But let's not stop there. We have other goodies. So the guys over at Color Fittings sent me this purple fittings. They also have this really cool green one, which I was debating if I should go purple or green. I actually wanna do both now. But I am going to do purple on my valve covers. Then I have this 90 degree fittings for the old catch can. I think I might do some mine grain fittings later because this color is definitely hot. They sent me hosing so I can connect the valve covers to the catch can. And they also sent a couple extra fittings to try it out as well. I have 180 degree fitting and I have my other 90 degree fitting here for the other part of the catch can. They also sent me this really cool shirt. Colorfittings.com. And then I got some stickers. And then I also got this other color stickers as well. I want to start with the valve cover bolts. So there are a total of 16 Allen bolts here. And then there's a bunch of little caps here. So we're gonna be looking for the M6 ones with a thicker cap. So it's gonna be these two rows. I'm gonna go ahead and open this and remove them from the packaging. That was a lot easier to sort. I think after opening all this, I have four imposters. This guy's an imposter. This one's also an imposter. This one is an imposter and this one is an imposter. This one is a smaller M6, so it's not like a regular smaller bolt. But the valve covers, you'll notice it has a lot thicker flange than the regular M6 one. And then these guys up here, will be M8 bolts. So this ones are not gonna be used. This one's not gonna be used. So we have our 16 washers right here. And we're gonna open the bag containing the 16 bolts as well. We have a full kit. I was gonna bother a bunch of you guys after I neatly organized it. Just kidding. I overly organized it this time. Now we're gonna take one bolt at a time. I have my super extended 10 mil socket. So I'm gonna take one bolt off. And we're going to replace it with an MPC 100 proof hardware instead of using the other one. So this is your standard bolt. And this is your new bolt. Looks a lot nicer, right? On the two JCs and the one JCs, you're gonna have these rubber washers so install your 100 proof hardware through this washer like this. So you're gonna have the rubber washer between the, this aluminum washer and the bolt and the head. So it doesn't scratch up your valve cover and applies nice um, cushion pressure on the valve cover. And we're going to use a five mil Allen wrench and tighten it down. Now we just gotta continue the process with the rest of the bolts. to 
the three other bolts. There's one here, one here, and one here, but the coil packs are on the way, so I'm gonna have to remove those in order to gain access. I'm going to use the coil pack harness and coil pack cover hardware for the coil packs since uh, I think I should be able to use these bolts with these washers to dress up the Toyota Jarry's coil packs that I'm using. Let's see how these are gonna look. I hope the length is right. They do fit. So it's a go. They're a little bit longer than the other one. Well, actually quite a bit longer, but they still work with the washers. There's nothing underneath the bracket either for it to interfere. So you can go past the length of the bracket without any issues. We definitely got to take care of this bolt on the power steering input. I grabbed one of the bolts from the IACV valve since I don't have one. I have two extra bolts and one of them is going to go here. Now that looks way better. I'm also going to be changing the water neck bolts right here to this one's RM6. I have a couple of these since I didn't use them on the quilt packs. But these are pretty simple. It's a 6 mil socket, and then to put it back, then it's a 5 mil Allen key. Just take one ball at a time, that way you don't have to worry about resealing the part or anything. And put this aside, we take the new bolt. Normally this hose is not here, I added that for my water supply for the turbo. So now that's in kind of in the way, but not really. There. I'm going to take two of the smaller bolts from the throttle body hardware. And these ones, I'm going to use them on this part right here. So I can add some thick ground for the harness. Since I have to do a custom Haltech harness for this engine, I might as well supply with proper grounding. And right here. That way I can have one for sensor ground, then I can make the coil pack harness and have a coil pack harness ground right to this really thick piece here too. The throttle body, I'm going to use the bolts that I already had. I'm just going to install the washers on this to dress them up. Well, doing the bolts on the bottom of the throttle body were not as comfortable as the top ones. I think I'm pretty much covered with everything. So next, we gotta address the valve cover fittings. These ones are here just for now. So I gotta remove this, put some thread sealer, and install them permanently. For this, we're going to be using Permatex seal and lock thread compound that I use on everything now. This this is a combination of the PTFC sealer with thread locker in one, which is really nice, especially if you don't want the fittings to be moving around when you're tying them. We're gonna add a little bead on this, just very thin. Oh, wait. There we go. Oh, that's a little too much. Just a little happy bead. Very happy bead. Oh, we need a little bit more here. And then kind of like take off all the excess. You can use the same bottle also to do that. And that's more like it. Now we're going to install this onto the valve cover. And then we want it to be facing back. That's already pretty hard there. And now I have to do basically almost like a full turn. 
and make it face back. For some reason, when I bought these valve covers, they came with the fittings and one side, it's a bigger thread than the other. Maybe the whole size is different on them and they did it that way, I'm not sure. Normally there's a uh, direct bolt-on fittings for these valve covers, but since these ones were already threaded, I still with the threaded ones, I really don't have any choice about that anymore. Oh, this one's gonna be a little bit easier. Can I just take this here? and twist into there perfect now we can install our beautiful purple fittings that one's gonna go there and then we install the other side fitting which is also gonna be a straight then we want to route everything towards the back what i'm trying to do is to run both lines back so this one's gonna come over from here around and then hopefully put the cash cannon around this area there by the, where the fuel regulator is at. And we're opening a package from the guys over at Nuke Performance. They sent me their new smaller cash can for the E36. And there's something else here. What are these? I have no idea what these are. What candy is this? There's also like a lanyard and a pen and some stickers and a brochure. Sweet. Marco, what are these? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> Swedish? I have no idea what that is. Savad God Taste Bell. It says God. This is God's taste. God really? taste. I don't know about that. Let's open this box and see what we have inside for a catch can. A bunch of fittings, that's always cool from Nuke. Then all this fancy protective wrapping. Put this aside. And here we have our new catch can for the E36. This is our new half liter version of the older one that I had. That's the bigger race version. I think this one is a liter and a half or two, a liter. And then this one is more compact than this one. It's one of their better ones, but I don't have a lot of clearance, so this one should fit in my engine bay. I want to put the cash can pretty much in this corner right here, but I am going to have to modify the bracket. But I am gonna have to modify the bracket so I can bolt it on to the strut tower, but it won't let me here. So I'll probably cut this side, mount this here, and then I'll weld this spot back somewhere around here. So we're just gonna leave this here since I have to modify this and it's already one in the morning. We best get out of here. Mark, are you tired? Yeah, it's gone. You tired? You haven't done anything all day. Shh, I've been working out there. So have I. Now the engine looks really awesome. We have a blow valve and we're almost done with the venting of the valve covers. I just have to make that bracket to install the catch can tomorrow. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. Please smash that like button and subscribe for more awesome content. And don't forget to check out MPC Motorsports for their hardware kits. If you want to complement your engine bay with additional color, you can also check out color fittings. I'll post their Instagram in the description below. That way you can see their color assortments that suits your engine bay.